Well, blood banks can be very confusing places. For example, this guy was just trying to be helpful, but did it help? No. They tell him, well, they'll take the blood out for him next time. So, other confusing things that go on over at the blood bank is they can use multiplex PCR to determine whether or not a person has a deletion uh, of a genomic locus. And since there are only a few known genomic uh, deletions in the alpha globin gene, uh, we can use multiplex to screen for all of them simultaneously. So that gets a little confusing, so I want to go through that here in these slides. Okay, to review just what we can learn from PCR, there's three basic things we can learn by doing these reactions. One of them is, is a particular nucleic acid present in a sample? We can also determine how many copies of that nucleic acid there are, and we'll use that more when we're testing for pathogens. Uh, but the second thing is more useful here. That is, PCR can tell us how far apart two primer binding sites are in a nucleic acid molecule. The third thing is that PCR can give us enough DNA to work with uh, to do practical things like sequence. Uh, but again, we're not interested in doing that here. The information we want to study deletions is just how far apart are the primer binding sites in a nucleic acid molecule. So here we've planned a PCR reaction uh, where we've got a forward primer over here and a reverse primer over here. Uh, we know the sequence of this locus, so we can plan these two primers. We know that they're about 1,200 base pairs apart in a normal alpha globin locus. So we can do a PCR, and we expect that uh, reaction to give us about a 1,200 base pair PCR product. If instead somebody has suffered a deletion of the information here, so this is all gone, then we're not going to get uh, that same size product, we still will get a PCR product, though, because we still have a forward primer facing a reverse primer, close enough to give us a chain reaction, and so we will still get PCR, uh, but now it will be shorter. It will be 300 base pairs. So this tells us how far apart the two primer sites are. In a normal case, it's 1,200 base pairs, and in the case of deletion, it's 300 base pairs. So that's how we can use PCR to determine uh, whether or not a deletion has occurred. Okay, to illustrate what happens if we've lost a deletion, let's imagine that we had four primers instead of those two. So the two forward primers, uh, in, in red up here, there's a red site that's going to bind primer one, and there's a pink site that would bind primer two over here. Uh, and we've got two reverse primers, a blue site that will be uh, priming, that will uh, bind primer number three, and a blue site that'll bind primer number four over here. So two forward and two reverse primers. If I use all four of these primers at the same time with a normal sample, I'm going to get several products because one and three will give me a product, two and three will give me a product, uh, one and four is going to give me a product, and two and four is going to give me a product. So I'm going to get all sorts of PCR products from using four primers uh, with a wild type normal sample. On the other hand, if I have a deletion, we've lost these guys. So this information is now gone. So 2 and 3 don't have anything to bind to. So I'm only going to get 1 binding to the red site that 1 usually binds to, and 4 binding to the blue site that 4 usually binds to. And now I'm going to get a much simpler uh, product. I'm only going to get this 300 base pair product when I do the PCR, even though I've used all four primers. Two and three don't do anything in this reaction. So that brings us to the normal case that we would use in an analytical lab laboratory where we would have uh, a whole series of primers that are covering this very large piece of DNA. So now we're looking at something like a 30 kb uh, region of the human genome that contains all of the homologous alpha globin genes the practical point that you have to have in mind here is that very large PCR products just don't form. So anything bigger than about 5,000 base pairs is just difficult to get PCR to work. And this is 30,000 base pairs that we're looking at here. So even though there are lots and lots of combinations that look like they would work, in a practical sense, we're really only going to get the shortest ones. 
So if I use these 14 primers, 7 forward and 7 reverse primers that are mapped here, uh, in an actual test with somebody with a, a normal alpha globin locus, I'm really only going to get this forward 6 reverse 1 and this forward 7 reverse 4 product. So I'm only going to get two PCR products of any substantial amounts out of a normal alpha globin locus. So multiplex PCR could give us a very confusing picture with a, the normal locus using so many primers, but the picture gets simplified just because of a point about PCR that we really are only going to get the shortest products out uh, in substantial amounts. So if I use the multiplex with a, a, a normal alpha globin locus, uh, I, I could get I should get these two diagnostic products this one and this one, and that should tell me that there is a, uh, a, a, a normal alpha globin locus present in the sample. On the other hand, somebody who has suffered this Mediterranean deletion, a very large piece of DNA is missing, all of the primers for these guys in the middle, the, all the primer sites are missing. So none of those are going to give me any PCR products. Uh, Instead, something that didn't give me a PCR product when I used the normal alpha globin locus, forward 2 and reverse 5 over here, will give me a product. So that we were too far apart in, in a normal locus, but because we've taken out all this information in the middle, they are now close to each other, facing each other, and are suitable PCR primer pair. So 2 to 5 won't give me a product in a normal alpha globin locus, but it will give me a product when I get rid of all this stuff in the middle. So the presence of the expected size, since we know how big the Mediterranean deletion is, we can anticipate exactly how big the 2 to 5 product will be in a Mediterranean deletion patient. Obtaining that P PCR product tells me that that person had the Mediterranean deletion in their genome. So that's how we can use multiplex to detect deletions. First, we have to know what the deletions are, so we can plan the primer so that they'll be adjacent to the edges of the deletion. So we had to know that the Mediterranean deletion went from here to here uh, so that we could plan primers that would flank it. But it turns out there's only a small number of, uh, of deletions that occur at reasonable frequency, so we can plan a multiplex set like this the advantage is we only have to do one PCR reaction to screen everybody, uh, and the size of the products that comes out tells us exactly what's going on in their genome. Uh, instead of having to do a series of tests, we can do one single test uh, using multiplex. So that's the advantage. It's cheaper, it's faster, uh, and it works because we're really just measuring the distance between two primers, and we know uh, from studying human populations in the past exactly how far apart those primers will be if particular deletions have occurred. So that's how we use multiplex to detect uh, genomic deletions.